Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, as well as the October month-long Pumpkin Playground Festival featuring hayrides and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188. Welcome to Gardening with Burke Nursery, the show where we help you grow your garden and increase the curb appeal of your yard. I'm your host, Misty Kacharis, the horticulturalist here at Burke Nursery and Garden Center, and today we're going to talk about planting and caring for spring flowering bulbs. Well, years ago, I moved into a new home, and I just thought, because all I had was a lawn and was yard. I just thought how beautiful it'd be if I took one corner of that property just between my driveway and the sidewalk and created an entire garden of spring bulbs. And I thought about what I call the usual suspects. I thought about tulip bulbs. I thought about crocus. I thought about daffodils, which by the way are also called narcissus. Narcissus, and I decided, well, as beautiful as those bulbs are, almost everyone has them, and I wanted something different. So I did a little bit of research and started looking at different bulbs. The other thing which also made me think about looking at different bulbs is that the crocus and the tulip bulbs and the daffodils, they all tend to come up around the same time. And I was curious to see if there might be some bulbs that came out perhaps at different times of the year. So what I'd like to do before I get into the actual nitty gritty and the tidbits of how to plant your bulbs and how to care for them, I'd like to show you a few of my favorite bulbs. The first bulb is the Galanthus. This is also known as Snowdrop. It is about six inches tall. And if you look at this picture, you'll see snow around it. That's why it's called snowdrops. Those little white flowers just come up in January or February. If there's snow on the ground, they don't care. They pop right up and they love full sun. They love to be planted in part shade. And they are what a lot of the packaging will say deer resistant. I am now calling it, they are deer less eaten. Another one of my favorite is the Scylla siberica, also known as the Siberian squill. From afar, these look like bluebells, and they come up a little after the snowdrops come up from early spring, and they will actually last into the summer. And if you see the picture, you'll see what a beautiful blue it is. There are some problems they do like to spread. And so I have them planted under my azaleas, and yet I have found them as far as 20 feet away in a new location where I didn't plant them. So there, there's one of the drawbacks. And if you look at the other picture, you'll actually see that the blue flower is star-shaped. It has very long leaves. Now, some people think that these leaves remind them of liriope. Other people think that these leaves look like very thin tulip leaves. But they come to about 8 to 12 inches tall, and they just love to be crowded together. And they wave when you have a little bit of a breeze going through them. They're also full sun to part shade, which is why they do so well under my azaleas. And they are also what I prefer to call deer less eaten, which on the labels will say deer resistant. Another bulb which is a favorite of mine is very, very fragrant. It is the grape hyacinth. And if you look at the picture here, you will see that it is a hyacinth. That part's true. But the flowers actually look like clusters of grapes. That's why it's called grape hyacinth. 
The most common colors are your blue and your purple, but you'll also find them in white and yellow. And these tend to bloom in what I prefer to call mid-spring, which is early to mid-spring, which is your April and May months. They love, like the other bulbs, full sun, partial shade. They are deer resistant, as the label says, or deer less eaten, as I prefer to call it. Because of the fragrance, they will attract a lot of bees. So when I plant these, I plant these further away from the driveway. I plant them further away from the door because you never know. You may have a guest that has some problems with, um, with bees and worries of being stung. So when you're planting, do keep that in mind as well. And then finally, my actual favorite of all favorites. This is the Allium. And the Allium is in the onion family. And when you look at this beautiful flower, it's a globe. And that looks so pretty in this picture. And there's so many different colors. There are purples and whites and reds and many, many colors. And these flowers will grow as large as six inches in diameter. Yes, you can have a flower head as large as half a foot long. Amazing. And if you look at the next picture, you'll see that these grow on stalks. So the leaves are way at the base, and you won't necessarily, from this picture, you can't see the leaves. They don't grow that high. But the stalks, they can reach as tall as four feet. And they also like full sun. They also like partial shade. And deer less eaten, or another way of wording it, deer resistant. Now when you're looking at creating a garden, you can either plant your bulbs in a new garden, or if you want, you can plant in an existing garden. You can plant them under your trees. You can plant them as I did under my azalea shrubs. Uh, you can plant them wherever in the yard that you want. But it's important when you, or before I begin with how to set up the new garden, let me say that you can plant your bulbs the best time of the year is either October or November. And I have actually planted bulbs as late as January. One year I got 500 bulbs as a gift from a friend right after Christmas. And I decided that I wanted to plant them all. I will honestly tell you I will never plant 500 bulbs at one time ever again. But I planted them in January, and they did, with the exception of the ones that the squirrels ate, the bulbs did come up in the spring, just as if I would have planted them in October or November. So when you start creating your garden, what you want to do is you need to amend your soil down to eight inches, especially here in Northern Virginia because of the clay soil that we have and you want to use organic matter. Organic matter can be peat moss, it can be mushroom compost, it can be some form of leaf compost or leaf grow, it can be, believe it or not, it can even be hardwood shredded mulch. But if you were to use hardwood shredded mulch, then I would use it with a combination of topsoil, to, uh, two-thirds topsoil and one-third of the hardwood shredded mulch. And of course, there's always your own compost, which you can use. What I don't always recommend um, is um, be very cautious as far as the use of manure, because there are some people, and I have never used manure as a compost for bulbs, so I, I don't know about this aspect, but some people feel that sometimes using a manure can attract critters as, as a compost. So you think about that and make your own decision as far as whether or not you want to use compost. If you have an existing garden, then you do need to loosen the soil down to at least eight inches. And you don't need to add compost, organic matter down to the eight inches. Just put it in two inches 
and mix it in, till it into the soil. All bulbs before they're planted need fertilizer. And bulbs need fertilizer with the middle number being the highest. So I have several different fertilizers here which will actually work. And let me see, this one is this? Yes, this is the one that I want to pull out. The reason I want to pull this out is so that you can read the number. If you look at the number, you will see it says 5, 10, 5. And the 5, that's the first number, it's your nitrogen. The 10, your second number, is your phosphorus. The 5, the third number, is your potash. And so the nitrogen goes to the flowering, but we're not trying to build flowers yet at this point. What we're trying to do is increase the roots. And so the roots, that's your middle number. That's your phosphorus. That's what goes to increasing the root strength. And then the final number is for the overall health of the plant. So you can use, if you want, a 5105 fertilizer. You can use a special fertilizer that is made for bulbs. You can use triple phosphate. Any numbers of, of these fertilizers will do very well. The fertilizers that are made specially for bulbs not only have the fertilizer, but they also have calcium and magnesium and some other trace minerals in them. So they're not just what I, to me what I call a pure fertilizer is a fertilizer that is just the fertilizer without the trace minerals. And then you have these others that have trace minerals and yet they're fertilizers. So I received an email question from Donna. And Donna asked, is bone meal a good fertilizer for bulbs? Well, Donna, that's a very good question and a very interesting question. Bone meal is just what they say it is. It is the ground up remnants of bones from various animals. It is extremely high if you well, I don't know if the camera will see this, but the fertilizer numbers on the bone meal are on the side of the bag here. In this case, this is a 410-0. So this particular bone meal has some nitrogen in it. And the 10, it's the 12 rather, the middle number, very, very high in phosphate. And then it has no potash in it at all. And here's what you need to consider if you want to use bone meal. Because bone meal comes from animals, you might attract critters to your bulbs. They can smell the bone meal. They may be interested in finding out what else besides bulbs is buried in the ground. The other is there are some universities that recommend if you're going to use the bone meal to also add another fertilizer to that and that fertilizer is what I call your general overall purpose fertilizer. And that fertilizer is um, your 10-10-10 um, garden fertilizer. So I hope this has answered your question. Basically, I would recommend the general fertilizers only because you don't know if you might attract critters. But if you've used bone meal and you're happy with the bone meal, it will definitely work as one of the products in growing your bulbs. So if you have any questions about any aspects of gardening, please feel free to, call, uh, to email me at misty at burknursery.com. The next thing with bulbs is that bulbs like a pH of 6.0 to 7.0, which means they're pretty close to wanting neutral. And here in Northern Virginia, we may find that we have a, uh, a more acidic soil, more like 5.7 or maybe even more acidic. 
So if that's the case and you've done a soil test and you find that you have acidic soil, then add some lime because you want to raise that pH to 6.0 to 7.0. Uh, 7 and you can either use what I call lawn lime, which is your calcitic lime, or you can use, in this case, this is sold as garden lime, dolomitic lime, and the dolomitic lime has magnesium in it, which the lawn lime does not, but either lime will work in your yard. The other thing about fertilizing is never, please never fertilize your plant when the plant is blooming. It isn't happy with that fertilizer, but do fertilize it when those shoots start emerging in the spring. Now the next thing that I'd like to show you are the tools that you need. And the tools are very simple. You can either get yourself a hand bulb, which you put in the ground, and then you just kind of push it and pull it out, and it will pull out that amount of soil. Or I always feel like I'm looking at a, uh, when you were a kid, I don't know if you ever jumped on these things, but this is one where you don't have to bend over as you do with the hand bulb, and this is known as a long neck bulb planter. And some of you may have seen what I call these giant corkscrews at a nursery center, and these are bulb ogres. So what you do is you put it in the ground and just like a corkscrew, turn it around, pull it up, and you have your bulb hole. Or you may want to use a small trowel, again, so that you can stick it in the ground and pull it up and pull up the soil with you. You don't really want to make a big space. You just want to take out enough soil for you to be able to drop your bulbs into that area. And then one other thing is, almost forgot, and this is important, when it comes to crocus, when it comes to tulips, squirrels love them. And you may want to actually purchase a squirrel repellent that can that you spray on the tulips, you spray on the crocus, and it will help prevent them from eating those bulbs. Or you may want to put marble chips in the holes because the marble chips hurt their little noses. And that can also help prevent the squirrels or other critters from getting at your bulbs. What I'd like to do now is I would like to demonstrate just how to plant bulbs. And what I have here is I have three bulbs. This teeny little bulb, this is a snowdrop bulb or a galanthus bulb, one of my favorite bulbs. This bulb, I think a lot of you will recognize, this is a daffodil bulb. And like the Glanthus, the daffodil bulb is also, and in this case, I would say that this is definitely a deer-resistant bulb because the daffodil bulb is toxic to deer and they will stay away from this as much as possible. And again, daffodils are also called narcissus or narcissists, I guess. And then finally, the last bulb that I'll show you how to plant today is the all-famous tulip bulb. And this here is what squirrels and deer love to eat. It really is almost like a sushi bar for them. Before I go into how to plant, what I'd like to do is go into a few little rules. And the few little rules are that when you have a bulb, and actually, before I go into the few little rules, one of the things I do want to say is that often that the packaging that the bulbs come in when you purchase them from a garden center or, when you, or somewhere else, they do tell you how deep to plant the bulbs. So that's the good news. But 
sometimes, as I did a few years ago, receive a whole gift of bulbs, those gifts of bulbs really won't have any instructions as far as how deep to plant them. So the general rule of thumb is that you always plant the bulbs two to three inches deep based on the size of the bulb. So what I have here is I have a snowdrop. This is a galanthus. And as I said, this is one of my favorite uh, bulbs. And, you'll, and basically what you want to do is when you plant a bulb, you want to plant it two to three times deeper than its size starting from the bottom. And to show you in more detail what I mean is that this bulb, when I measure it with my trusty ruler, is one inch. And so, and I, if I said diameter, I meant tall. So this is one inch tall, which means that I will plant it two to three inches from the base. So what that means is if, I, if it's two to three inches from the base, I am actually going to plant this three inches to four inches into the ground. If you look at your daffodil or your narcissus, you measure since they come split, go to the taller split and measure that. And this is now two and a half, almost three inches. So that means that I would, I would go either down six to nine inches to plant this daffodil from the bottom. And you would do the same with your tulip. The one question I do get from a lot of people is, what if I don't know how to plant it? What if I don't know because with any bulb, you always want to know where the point is, and you want to plant it so that the tipping point or the tipping bloom point is up, and then you have the roots at the base. But if you don't know and if you're not sure, you can plant bulbs sideways, and they will come up. They won't come up if you plant them upside down, but they will come up if you plant them sideways. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plant these bulbs to show you just what I'm talking about. The first thing I had mentioned is if you have tulips, tulips are well loved by squirrels, they're well loved by other critters, deer of course, and so you can take a product, any of the squirrel repellents or deer repellents, you can take one of these two products and what you would do then, and do read the product label because not all products you can do this with, but there are certain products that you can use to spray on your trees and shrubs to repel deer and other critters. And then there are other products that in addition to that, you can spray on your bulbs. So we're going to pretend to spray the bulb and prepare it for planting. After I've sprayed the bulb, what I want to do is uh, let the bulb dry. And so while the bulb is drying, I am going to plant my daffodil. And I have this clear pot here that you can look at. And so I need to plant that bulb eight inches or six inches, which means that if I wanted to plant it in this pot, I would need to plant it about one inch from the base of the pot. Or if I'm planting this in the ground, it's the same thing. So I would take, in this case, my trowel, and I would just put this in the ground. And then the next thing that I would do is I would take my snowdrop and I would actually plant the snowdrop 
just three or four inches almost above, directly above that daffodil. What that means, because the snowdrop comes out first, I will see the snowdrop, and then the daffodil will come up next, and I'll have a continual show in that area. The other thing, in this case, this is a pot, so I'm gonna put this pot on my deck and have some bulbs that I can see through the next, into the next spring on my deck. I'll just cover this with a little chicken wire to prevent those squirrels from trying to dig up my bulb. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the various bulbs that you can find and how to plant them. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me here at Gardening with Burke Nursery. And I'm looking forward to helping you grow your garden. Funding for this program is made possible by Burke Nursery and Garden Center in Burke, Virginia. You'll find trees and shrubs, perennials and annuals, water garden supplies, house plants, and bird and gardening supplies. Burke Nursery also provides landscape, plant diagnostic, and installation services, as well as the October month-long Pumpkin Playground Festival featuring hayrides and much more. For more information, you can check out their website or call 703-323-1188.